Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of eye candy today, an alternative explanation for one of them, and some items on Earth and Sun to be watching as we begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the Sun a bit quieter. Various filament reorganizations and small pops, but no considerable flares or CMEs. A few ejections did leave the Sun sideways from Earth's perspective, but all the filaments facing Earth are holding despite their movement. Still several to be monitored along with the sunspots and the solar wind of the coronal hole, likely crested in power overnight at moderate range only. Moderate speed and moderate density leaving small signatures and driving minute enhancements to the geomagnetic condition. We do expect one more enhancement from a coronal hole stream, but that one should also be minor to moderate. Earthquake worth noting overnight, 100 miles from the Tonga volcano. It is on the same arc, however, and eyes remain on the region. And from there, we will shift just slightly north and check out atmospheric rivers in the Pacific, how they form and are enhanced by the combination of moisture flows near Hawaii, and then the combined forcing of that vapor up towards the U.S. West Coast. The simulation uses 3D changing wind map style motion points and is unquestionably the most detailed version of an atmospheric river or arc storm and how it interacts at the coastline to intensify rainfall. It is getting to be the season for these events as the heat shift in the Pacific begins soon on approach to spring. Fascinating story here about a mega drought that took out ancient civilizations a bit over 4,000 years ago. This is one of the after-effect shifts of the DO events we've discussed. There was one just a couple hundred years before this. And while those DO events create extra rainfall in the decades to centuries after that, we swing back the other way. That extra rainfall perhaps is what enticed the denser occupation of that region, but those shifts fade and swing back the other way, as I mentioned, and in this case, drought to the tune of over a dozen centimeters of dry, dusty sediment that was too harsh for even the earthworms. Lastly, on the article front, an animation coming with a study of something outrageously different. They know pulsars and about how long they should take in their pulses. There is some variability, but not much, except now there is the slowest one ever. Instead of a millisecond pulsar or one that spins and pulses every one to two minutes, this one pulses every 18 minutes, about three times an hour. And for the processes needed to explain such activity, they are left guessing. They offer two guesses, and you can tell in their wording they're not completely satisfied. A strange pulsar or a white dwarf. It should be noted that repeating transients that break astronomical expectations are the first step in spotting radio emission from intelligent species, but we may leave that one for another day. They do fail to mention that option in the article. Folks, a lot of you caught last night's video, and I don't think a single one of you chose option A. That was impressive. I definitely got serious on you folks there for a minute, didn't I? Of course, the words at the end are what's most important. We greatly appreciate your support. Check out last night's video if you missed it and weigh in, option A or option B. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.